thank you uh, thank you chairperson and uh, thank you to all of you for staying back post lunch session and uh, all are uh, listening carefully so that's more important for me uh, i'm discussing uh, how we have proceeded in this case uh, it's very easy diagnosis even if uh, you can diagnose from uh, 10 meters or 20 meters or even you can diagnose with a vision of uh, 6 by 60 is very simple the most important thing is management how do we manage this case so uh, we got this 48 year old gentleman he was apparently normal till september 22 and uh, symptomatic from last 6 to 8 months only had history of melena for 3 uh, 4 days no pain abdomen also leading complaint was that having knee pain which is more in left than right associated with some swelling no fractures and uh, he is resident of leh ladakh so he was referred to aims at this stage and uh, when we saw and asked history by seeing his face i will show in subsequent slide Uh, by seeing his face look like that uh, having acromegaly so we ask specific question related to that complaining of thickening of uh, lips and coarsening of facial features from last 20 to 25 years without having any complaint similarly also complaint of uh, when we asked he said yes my voice has changed there has acrone enlargement from last 20 years Uh, in form of inability to fit the older uh, finger rings and shoe size has changed there was headache which responded nicely to the analgesic so whenever uh, he felt headache he took uh, analgesic and re relieved there was no visual field defects snoring chest pain shortness of breath this was as per history family history was also not significant with height was 174 cm which is not excessively tall but seeing uh, population from where he is coming ladakhi people are not that tall so he was considered as tall in his uh, family so this was typical face of uh, this person you can see the large forehead prominent supra orbital margins widening of nose prominent nasolabial fold there is uh, 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 maxillary widening there is prognathism there is prognathism jaw malocclusion overbite and uh, when we uh, saw teeth there was widely spaced teeth increase uh, gap between teeth there was and last tongue so at the margins of tongue there was a marking of the uh, teeth so this is typical acromegaloid face and it's very difficult to miss if anybody has seen once can diagnose acromegaly at any point of time and there are hardly any differential diagnosis so this acromegaly results from excess production of the growth hormone mostly it's a tumor especially tumor of the pituitary which is seen in almost 99.99% of the cases uh, less than 1% could be hypothalamic tumor or over production of ghrh still we are from last 20 years we are searching for ghrh over production but we have not seen uh, so tumor causes excess growth hormone which results in igf because 80% of uh, actions of growth hormone are carried about uh, by igf so this excess growth hormone and igf this results in acral and soft tissue growth not only they cause a soft tissue growth since they work anti insulin so there are a lot of uh, metabolic function derangements also and uh, symptoms uh, or uh, manifestations are two folds one is because of the large tumor size so there is a compressing effect of the nearby structures and second is because of peripheral actions of excess gh and igf so this these are the two three other uh, patients we have seen in uh, our clinic you can see similar feature there is a large uh, there is prognathism large mandible maxillary in uh, hypertrophy there is increase in the width of nose nasolabial fold similarly these three patients have similar kind of uh, features not only over face the somatic effects of excess of gh and igf is also visible on hands and feet also because of uh, soft tissue enlargement so uh, this is this is a normal hand and this is you can see the size of hand in comparison to normal and uh, there is thick thinner and hyperthinner muscles hypertrophy there is hypertrophy of the distal phalanges and uh, not seen in this picture but 
uh, typical description given in textbook is spade like hands now uh, why we had uh, so insidious onset in our case he had complained from last 20 years and it didn't come to clinical attention so it's a all very gradually progressing disease soft tissue enlargement is so insidious that it's hardly to recognize even uh, for the family members and most of the time they come to clinical attention whenever uh, there is a large tumor which causes visual impairment or sometimes may go to dental orthopedic rheumatology or cardiac uh, problems go to these consultants and they refer that uh, yes there looks something abnormal increase in height yes possible because we know that growth hormone causes linear increase in the height if uh, this condition starts before the uh, fusion of epiphysis in that case we can have uh, we can have uh, increase in the height so this is a black and white photograph from one of uh, our patients patient presented to us in 2015 and you can see that even if we see 1992 there was coarsening of facial features which gradually progressed to this stage so if we could have suspected at at the in 1992 or 1995 where we believe that tumor must have been a small size could have been easily treated could have achieved cure which is not possible when he is presenting with a large uh, tumor Apart from that, face and hands, there are other typical changes of uh, acromegaly, like voice is so typical that uh, over phone can be easily diagnosed because there is laryngeal hypertrophy. At the uh, same time, parasinus, uh, paranasal sinuses are increased in the size, so it's a more hollow kind of voice. There is increased shoe and ring and head size, commonly reported hyperhidrosis. Oily skin, carpal tunnel syndrome is seen in 50% of the cases, proximal myopathy, hypertension, sleep apnea which could be central as well as it uh, could be uh, peripheral also because of the hypertrophy of the larynx, there may be depression, mood changes, impaired quality of life because of all these uh, complaints. Uh, skin tags are commonly seen because of the excess of the IGF-1 around the neck and these are correlated with the presence of adeno, uh, adenomatous colonic uh, polyp. Not only hand and uh, feet increases, all organs in body increases. So there is generalized visceromegaly, salivary gland, thyroid, heart, liver, spleen, prostate, everything increases in the size. So cartilage also increases in size, however the space in joint is limited, so if there is a car, car, cartilage hypertrophy leads to uh, difficulty in the mobility and pain. Heel pad thickness is one previously considered as one of the very diagnostic feature of the acromegaly and different x-rays were taken to diagnose that but nowadays with wide availability of GH and IGF uh, this is hardly used. Local tumor effect of pituitary mass is also and presenting feature in almost most of the cases since more than 60% or 70% of cases are because of the macroadenoma which is more than 1 centimeter in size. This in cellar stretching or pressure over the nearby structures can lead to headache or it may cause visual field defect because pituitary lies just beneath the optic chiasma. So any growth of pituitary will push the optic chiasma and may cause uh, uh, visual field defect. At the same time, it will compress the other pituitary cells. We know that it secretes uh, 6 by anterior pituitary and 2 by posterior pituitary. So all of these can be compressed and we can have deficiency features of uh, these secretion like hypocortisolism, hypogonadism and hypothyroidism. Uh, apart from that, since uh, growth hormone is, uh, uh, works against uh, insulin, so um, diabetes is one of the important uh, presentation of all these patients, not only diabetes, hypertension, hyperprolactinemia, secondary adrenal or thyroid failure is seen in almost 20 to 30 percent of the cases. Apart from that, hypertriglyceridemia, hypercalciuria, hypercalcemia are also common in growth hormone excess. So when we should suspect uh, acromegaly in clinical practice, definitely if we have clinical features, we will suspect. Apart from that, all cases of tall stature, especially they are tall for their family height or 
even if mild coarsening of facial features or poorly controlled blood pressure or diabetes, still we can think or if there is history of change in shoe size or resize, these are the areas where acromegaly is worth investigation. It may be possible that we may pick up uh, at uh, early age. Gigantism is a type of acromegaly where uh, excess growth hormone production starts quite early before fusion of uh, epiphysis. So the presenting complaint is a tall stature. Apart from that, they may have all other features similar to that of uh, uh, similar to that of agromegaly and tallest people in the world who are pathological tallest like this Sandy Allen's example, eight feet one inches. You can see and uh, see the special ambulance was uh, uh, manufactured for her to take her to the hospital. And this is uh, example of another uh, lady, Jenna Bibi, seven feet two inches, and this is tallest man of the world, uh, Alam Channa, which was 9 feet 4 inches from Pakistan, ultimately uh, died of uh, renal failure. And uh, this is this is uh, our own tall person, Great Kali, which is, uh, which is again case of uh, uh, pre-pubertal onset of uh, acromegaly. And this is uh, one of our patient uh, presented with gigantism. She is mother and in comparison to that, you can see how the uh, daughter was uh, growing. So diagnosis of acromegaly is not difficult. Once we have clinical suspicion, then we go for biochemical confirmation. Once it's confirmed that having acromegaly, then we go for radiological evaluation, do MRI to find out if there are any tumor or not, and uh, then evaluate for the other uh, complications. So biochemical confirmation is not difficult since uh, glucose suppresses the growth hormone. So we want to see whether this is autonomous production or physiological production. We give 75 gram of glucose and collect blood sample at 0.30 96 and 91 20 minutes and uh, see the uh, lowest uh, GH level if it's less than 1 nanogram per ml that rules out agromegaly and, and levels more than 1 confirms diagnosis serum IGF levels are very high 2 to 3 times of the upper limit of the normal however there are some conditions which mimic uh, the diagnosis like uh, severe insulin resistance or uh, uh, unusually high dose of minoxidil can cause a facial uh, coarsening or pachydermoperiostosis uh, may also result. But usually diagnosis is more or less confirmed. And uh, if you want to see, just uh, do X-ray skull lateral. You can see there is enlargement of the uh, uh, cella. There is a thick, thick velar. There is prognathism. There is a hypertrophy of the mandible. So these are the features which are highly suggestive and if not go for MRI you can see there is a large pituitary tumor here this is optic chiasma which is compressed against the rest of the tissue and this is flattened pituitary you can see here so apart from that other investigation since they have uh, colonic uh, polyps or colonoscopy sleep studies or studies for carpal tunnel syndrome, echocardiography, ultrasound is routinely required. And then uh, we need certain investigation to make them surgically fit because treatment is uh, uh, surgery only. So after optimization of blood pressure and glycemic control and uh, associated hypopituitarism, surgery is the treatment of choice if required, followed by radiotherapy or medical management. So this is transnasal, transsphenoidal surgery, which is very easy. You can, you can enter through nose or you can enter through sublabial space, go there directly because these are all sinuses and uh, you can remove tumor, which is uh, highly successful and effective surgery. Uh, effects on clinical features starts within few hours after surgery, metabolic dysfunction improves, soft tissue swelling, uh, starts improving remission we say that uh, when the glucose suppressed growth hormone is less than 0.4 nanogram per ml or random gh is less than 1 nanogram per ml which is very unlikely in case of uh, macro adenoma chances are only 30 to 40 percent who are likely to get remission older age smaller tumor size preoperative gh or igf1 levels are low these are the patient who come into that 40 percent category so post-operative management, again, uh, optimization of blood pressure control. If GH and IGF-1 levels are high, we can go for gamma knife or conventional radiotherapy. If not required, then we can go for uh, medical management, which is long-acting somatostatin receptor uh, octreotide depot, 20 to 30 milligram intramuscularly for rest of the life or till the effect of gamma knife comes, cost around 20,000 uh, per month. 
morbidity and mortality remains high because uh, IGF-1 levels are not normalized in most of the cases and cardiovascular disease is the most common cause of morbidity and mortality. So coming back to our patient, uh, acromegaly, so he underwent GH suppression, all GH are more than 40 nanogram per ml, colonoscopy, he has adenoma and during admission he was found to have diabetes and hypertension. Uh, ultrasound also showed right renal calculi. So, so this is MRI of uh, this patient and uh, he was operated uh, with TNTS, developed CS CSF rhinorrhea, insulin doses, markedly reduced blood pressure control with single drug. Now post-operatively unsuppressed GH with persistent hyperpituitarism, repeat MRI at three months, showed small residual. So uh, he is planned for uh, gamma knife therapy. I think this is all about uh, our case of 48 years. Thank you very much. Uh, you took us very nicely through a case. Careful.